Welcome back to the three months of Modal Logics, a sequel to 100 Days of Logic here with Carnades.org. Today we are going to be continuing with the final 10 days of logic, looking at agential deontic logic. To be clear, this video and the next two videos are going to be on kind of advanced topics in each of the three modal logics that we've looked at. This video, of course, is going to be a bit of an advanced topic in deontic logic, looking at how we can combine deontic logic with actually another modal logic known as agential logic to deal with some of the problems and paradoxes that can arise for deontic logic. In the next video, we'll look at an advanced topic in temporal logic, talking about how we can represent the interval as opposed to the instant model of time logically, and in the video after that, we'll do something for an advanced topic in epistemic and doxastic logic. So hopefully that's clear. Now, agential or agent-centered logic is going to help solve some of the puzzles and problems we have in deontic logic. Now, obligations are going to differ depending on who has them. It might be impermissible for just anyone to go up on the street and kiss Abhishek's wife, but clearly it is permissible for Abhishek to kiss his wife, at least if she lets him. If we take K as bring it about that Abhishek's wife is kissed, then even though it is impermissible that you, as just a random person on the street, bring it about that Abhishek's wife is kissed, it doesn't seem to follow, as it logically should, that you are obligated to make sure that it is not the case that anyone kisses Abhishek's wife. Just because it's impermissible for anyone on the street to kiss Abhishek's wife, it doesn't mean that it is the obligation of everyone on the street to prevent anyone from kissing Abhishek's wife. However, our logical definition of impermissibility simply is it's obligatory that not K. So we have a problem. In order to explain these types of situations, we're going to introduce a new set of deontic operators involving bringing something about. Basically, while it may be impermissible for you to bring it about that Abhishek's wife is kissed, it is also impermissible that you prevent Abhishek from bringing it about that his wife is kissed. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, this new set of modal operators is going to be based around the idea of bringing something about. And we're going to represent that with BA. So BAP means that someone brings it about that P. Not a specific person, but generally someone. So BA, the dishes are washed, means someone brings it about that the dishes are washed. We're also going to have a couple of other operators that are going to correspond in our classic modal logic format with the other versions of these operators in modal logic, and we'll look at exactly how they do that in a second. So RO is going to mean that P is ruled out by someone's action, so someone brings it about that not P. RO is defined as BA, not P. So RO, the train gets in on time, means that someone ruled it out that the train will get in on time. They brought it about that the train will not get in on time. Hopefully that's clear. RO is ruled out, BA is bring about. NR means that P is not ruled out by someone's actions. It is not the case that someone brings it about that P is not the case. NRP is defined as not the case that BA not P. NR, the ship can be saved, means that someone did not rule it out that the ship can be saved, or that someone did not bring it about that the ship cannot be saved. So basically, the ship can still be saved. It's not ruled out that the ship can be saved. NB means that P is not brought about by someone's actions. It is not the case that someone brings it about that P. NBP is defined as, it's not the case that BAP. NB, the dog is walked, means that it is not the case that someone brought it about that the dog was walked. Hopefully those four make sense. There's one more which is going to kind of compare to optionality in deontic logic, which is PV, or passive regarding P, means that someone is passive in regards to P. They do not bring P about, nor do they bring not P about. PV, P is going to be defined as it's not the case that BAP, and it's not the case that BA, not P. 
PV the sun explodes means that someone is passive in regards to the sun exploding. Someone neither brings it about that it does explode, nor that it does not explode. Therefore, all of the predicates can be defined in terms of BAP, bring it about that P. RO is defined as BA not P, NR is defined as not BA not P, ND is defined as not BAP, and PV, as we just said, is defined as not BAP and not BA not P. Correction there. So, these different terms can be used to create a classic modal logic square. So BA and NB are going to be contradictory, as are NR and OR. Makes sense. Bringing something about, not bringing it about. Ruling something out, not ruling it out. Seem to be naturally contradictory terms. Our top two are going to be contrary. At least one is false. They can't both be true. While our bottom two are going to be subcontrary. At least one is true. They can't both be false. And we're going to have subalternation relations going down the side. Truth flows downwards. If the top one is true, the bottom one must be. And falsehood flows up. If the bottom one is false, the top one must be. Hopefully that makes sense. Once again, this is a classic square of opposition. Check out all of the other videos I have on deontic and other squares of opposition if you're curious. Now, like any modal logic, there are axioms for our agency logic. Here are a few of them. Axiom T, if someone brings about that P, then P is the case. Seems to make sense. Conjunction axiom, if someone brings it about that P and Q, then they bring it about that P and they bring it about that Q. And the tautology axiom, it's not the case that someone can bring about a tautology. Tautologies are just already true. You don't bring them about. You don't cause them to be true. Now what we're going to do is we are going to look at how bringing about can be paired with our obligations to come up with new ways to describe the ways that obligations are put out there in terms of agents. So let's take a look. OBBAP means it is obligatory that someone bring it about that P. OBBA, the light is turned off, means it is obligatory that someone bring it about, that the light is turned off. Not OBBAP means that it is not obligatory that someone bring it about that P. It is equivalent to it's permissible that it's not the case that you bring it about that P, or it's omissible that you bring it about that P, or it's permissible that you do not bring it about that P. It's permissible that no one brings it about that P, or it is omissible that someone does bring it about that P. It's not the case that OBBA extra toilet paper is bought means that it is permissible that no one brings it about that extra toilet paper is bought. But it's also omissible that someone does bring it about that extra toilet paper is bought. Hopefully that makes sense. It is obligatory that it is not the case that just anyone bring it about that P. OB not BAP. This is equivalent to it is impermissible that you bring it about the P, and it's obligatory that you do not bring it about the P. Note here that we are saying that it is impermissible for just anyone to bring about that P, not that P is impermissible for everyone. OB not BAP break my television, or OB not BA break my television. It is impermissible for just anyone to break my television, but it seems permissible for me to do it. Note, this is importantly different from this statement, which is, oh, it is obligatory that someone bring it about that not P. This is equivalent to OBROP. It's obligatory that P is ruled out, and it's impermissible that it's not ruled out that P. Note the difference here, because here's an important thing for our paradox. This one is saying that someone needs to make it the case that P is false in order to satisfy this obligation. However, the previous one is saying that it's impermissible that just anyone bring it about that P. Whereas this one is saying it's impermissible that someone does not rule out that P. OBBA, it is not the case that the house is unlocked, means that it is obligatory that someone's actions make it so that the house is not unlocked. Hopefully the difference here makes sense. For the first one, 
it is impermissible for just anyone to bring it about that P. For the second one, it is impermissible for P not to be ruled out by someone. All right? Hopefully you understand the difference there. Think of Abishek and his wife to really understand that. So, it is not the case that it is obligatory, that it is not the case that someone brings it about that P. This is equivalent to P-E-B-A-P and O-M-N-B-P. It is omissible if your actions fail to bring about P. It's not the case it's obligatory, that it's not the case that you bring it about that curry is cooked, means that it is permissible that someone bring it about that curry is cooked, or it's omissible that someone does not bring it about that curry is cooked. OB not BA not P, it is obligatory that it is not the case that someone brings it about that not P. This is equivalent to OB and RP and IM. R O P. It's impermissible that you rule out P. It must be the case that you do not render P impossible. It's obligatory that not B A. It is not the case that the girl st can still be saved means that it is impermissible that someone has ruled out the girl being saved. Right? I realize that these are complicated. Hopefully, you're getting at least some understanding of the way that these work. Now, OB, BA, not P. It is not the case that it is obligatory that someone brings it about that P is not the case. This is equivalent to it's omissible that P is ruled out or it's permissible that P is not ruled out. It is omissible that P is ruled out or permissible that P is not ruled out. It's not the case that OB, BA, it is not the case the dog is shaved means that it is not obligatory that you bring it about that the dog remains unshaved. Or, it is permissible not to rule out the dog being shaved, and omissible that you have ruled out the dog being shaved. Hopefully that makes sense. On the other hand, it's not the case it's obligatory, that it's not the case that you bring about that not P means that this is equivalent to it's permissible that you rule out P, or omissible that you don't rule out P. It's permissible that some P is ruled out, so it's either obligatory or optional that some P is ruled out. Or it's omissible that some P is not ruled out. It's either optional or impermissible that some P is not ruled out. Not OB, not BA. It is not the case that the house is clean means that it's permissible if you've made it so the house cannot be cleaned, but omissible if you've not yet ruled out this possibility. Hopefully those two make sense. I realize we're getting pretty complicated. The knots are getting in there a lot. Try it with specific examples and plug them into each of these different formulations that are equivalent to see if one of the various formulations makes sense to you. Now, as I noted, we can use this to solve the problem from earlier. It's impermissible for you or just for anyone to bring it about that Abishek's wife is kissed, just as it's impermissible for just anyone to come in and break my television, but it's also impermissible for you to prevent Abishek from kissing his wife or to prevent me from breaking my TV. Up next, we're going to be looking at interval logic and HS notation, interval-based temporal logic with Halpern, Shoham, and Allen. It's going to be quite a tough interval logic-based video, but it's actually a really cool way to express logic that's very different from instant-based logic. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.